As Gregor has said, if you have really good learning design, then digital tools can enhance that learning design in almost limitless ways. One strategy that I use is the active learning or flipped classroom method. With active learning, students complete a reading or do an activity prior to coming to class. I like to use short videos that are around five to seven minutes long. This teaches the background theory or the surface learning, which means it doesn't need to be delivered in the lecture. So students come into the classroom or lecture theatre already equipped. What happens is that students are able to engage more deeply with the content. I usually include hands-on activities that allow them to apply that knowledge in practical and real-life ways. The feedback from students is that they like the active nature of the course and the way the flipped classroom operates. I've also found that they engage with the content really well. When I poll students, at least 70% have watched the videos prior to coming to class. I use a lot of collaborative learning approaches. Although the tools I use aren't necessarily specifically designed for collaborative learning, one collaborative digital tool I use is called Padlet. Padlet is an online site which is very easy to use. The students type in their answers in real time. It's like sticky notes, but online. I also use other active learning tools such as learner response systems. The Echo 360 active learning platform is an example of this. With this tool, you can ask various types of questions like open-ended, true-false or multiple choice. Student responses in real time allow you to gauge where the students are at and focus on areas that need attention at that time. Interactive whiteboards are another great tool to support deep learning. The activities are at the student's level and they are really hands-on. This is particularly great for kinesthetic learners with interactive whiteboards encouraging engagement and motivation more broadly by shifting the physical space and challenging students to come to the front and not just have the teacher use the tool. Interactive whiteboards also provide a wealth of resources that are at the teacher's fingertips. Because so many schools now use interactive whiteboards, we actively prepare our pre-service teachers to use them in the future. The collaborative nature of these types of tools means that it's less worrying for the students if they don't know the answer individually, because other people in the group might know the answer. Students also like working together in a non-assessed format, as a lot of the group work at university is actually assessed. Student surveys reflect this, indicating high levels of engagement, and students really enjoy the active learning nature of these activities. Digital technologies are changing rapidly, but some are here to stay. During the 1990s, I started using Microsoft Excel to teach graphing to Year 4 students. It was pretty cutting edge at the time, and I presented this great new tool at a teacher conference. Someone actually asked me what I would use in five years' time. I said that I would use Excel, but this person insisted that Excel wouldn't be available because we would be using a new technology. But of course we are still using Excel 20 years later. So yes, some technologies do change, but what we want our students to be able to do is use the skills and concepts in different and new contexts. For example, we previously taught Photo Story to our students, whereas now we teach Microsoft Office Mix. The students that learnt to use Photo Story don't have any problem adapting to Office Mix as they are able to engage with that type of technology and the interactive nature of such digital tools. So, going back to the critical importance of learning design, it's important to use digital tools that are relevant and appropriate for the task. Technology isn't the answer. Learning design is. Digital tools should enhance learning and not just be used for its own sake.